A unique initiative to have a mobile computer laboratory in a bus is set to be complete in the next one month. The Digibus, which will have fixed laptops to teach young students from Kibra computer skills and coding, has been conceived by former England rugby international Simon Shaw, who was born in Kenya as part of the Atlas Foundation. Now, former Kenya Sevens captain Humphrey Khayange, who is an ambassador for the charity, has been following the progress of the special bus being constructed right here in Nairobi. Our very own Bernard Ndong spent the day with Tall, that's what they call him. Here is his story. Former Shuja star Humphrey Khayange joins for harder deal one of the project managers at the Atlas Foundation to assess the progress of the construction of this special bus at the master's fabricator in industrial area Nairobi. The two have made numerous visits to the factory which specializes in the manufacture of buses, but this specific coach is tailor-made for young kids in Kibra, who are part of the King's Rugby Development Academy. Simon Shaw, who has played for the National England Rugby 15s team, and the British and Irish Lions visited Kenya in 2019 as part of a rugby mentorship trip in the informal settlement. <laughs> he managed to identify the potential of setting up the bus project. Uh, that the one thing they were all missing was uh, accessibility, uh, the, the ability for the kids to get out to some of the projects that, that involve rugby camps or, or educational camps, uh, and also uh, how, how could we, as a charity, as a foundation, uh, get to the children? And it just seemed to me that a mobile classroom would be the absolutely ideal solution to the, both those issues. In the initial plan, the famous London bus was to be shipped to the port of Mombasa and then driven to Kibera by the Atlas Foundation's officials, led by the founder Jason Leonard, another England legend, Simon Shaw and Humphrey Kayange. Those plans were, however, shelved because of the high costs involved. We looked at the economical aspect of it and decided that uh, it, would be more, it would be more impactful if we let Kenyans do it. And uh, I think so far it's really helped us and it's really helping the different uh, suppliers who um, are working on this project. Example like Masters, they've been able to employ at least 30 people during this COVID period to ensure that uh, the bus is being done. The idea struck a chord with Kayange, who has been actively involved in charity programs targeting underprivileged children through rugby. So if they are running a program in Kibera and they want to run, run a program in Madari, the bus can easily be drove, driven to, to Madari and the kids there can have their time and experience the bus and the services it offers. The bus which was purchased in January was stripped down to its shell and will be retrofitted with workstations with fixed laptops, headsets and solar panels. We, the way the bus has been designed is on a very light structure and it's not going to be having life um, load on it when it's moving. So I, I, we, we have not made any modifications on the chassis. If there's anything, we made modification on the bus frame and uh, to make it suitable to carry the solar panels and the generator, which were negligible weight to the system. The bus was initially set to be complete by April, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the timelines had to be altered. Once the bus goes into, let's say, for example, School X, they will, um, they will have about two-hour session, different classes. We will be rolling out a program for it to ensure that um, all aspects of computer, of basic computer classes are captured. The bus is currently at 60% complete and is expected to be finished by the end of July. Bernard Ndong for Citizen TV at the Master's Fabricators Industrial Area, Nairobi.